Hi, this is Riley from Klaus here, and in this video, we're going to explore how to make the most out of Klaus's Auto QA feature. We'll start in the scorecard settings where you actually set up the Auto QA categories. We recommend to use Auto QA in two different ways. First of all, you should look to update your main scorecard with any of the relevant Auto QA categories. This will help speed up the time it takes for your reviewers to make the reviews, as well as remove any bias from these categories. Your main scorecard may consist of categories that do not have an Auto QA equivalent, and you may also choose not to use all of the Auto QA categories in your main scorecard. That is totally fine. You can choose to use as many or as little of the Auto QA categories as you wish, and of course you should use the ones that are relevant to you and your definition of support quality. As you can see, my main scorecard consists of a mix of Auto QA categories such as Greeting and Empathy, as well as non-Auto QA categories such as Process Adherence and Product Knowledge. This is because there are some categories and factions of my support that Auto QA is not going to be able to grade for me. While it can detect if a solution was provided or not, the AI will not be able to determine if the agent followed your internal processes correctly. For that reason, it's important to keep some categories that only your human reviewers will be able to grade. Once you have updated your main scorecard with the relevant Auto QA categories, what we recommend is to actually create a second scorecard with all six of the Auto QA categories enabled, and you can label this scorecard as Auto QA like I have. The benefits of doing this means that all six Auto QA categories will be running in the background across 100% of your support volumes. This helps you identify trends and training needs of your team without impacting the internal quality score of your agents. One final tip on the category selection is if you don't normally use spelling and grammar in your main scorecard, consider adding it and making it weightless. This means that your agents will not actually be penalized for poor spelling and grammar. However, you can make use of the auto QA feature which highlights all of the spelling and grammatical errors throughout the conversation. This is a really useful training tool for your agents. Now that AutoQA is set up on its own scorecard with all six enabled, it means we can use the results of these to find more meaningful conversations. One of the biggest benefits of AutoQA is its ability to help find the most relevant tickets for your review team to focus their manual efforts on. Regardless if you use all of the AutoQA categories in your main scorecard or not, by having them all enabled in an Auto QA scorecard means that it's analyzing 100% of your conversations for those six categories. What's so useful about that is you can use the findings of the Auto QA to help you filter for more relevant cases to review. You do this by using the filters. For example, when you go to add a new filter, you can see that all of the Auto QA categories are there for you to use, meaning that you can search for cases where, for example, closing was negatively rated by the auto QA. This will then pull you a list of tickets to review and understand where your agent went wrong on this category. Some good examples of using the auto QA categories in filters are the likes of solution being not found. This will then locate you a list of conversations where AI has detected that an agent did not actually give a solution to the customer. Is a very decent place to look for relevant feedback to provide. Another example is when agents display uh, or a lack of empathy. This also is a good filter to apply to look for conversations where the agent may need some feedback. Combining filter options really helps you find those needle in the haystack cases, which will allow your review team to spend their time actually giving more relevant feedback to your agents. For example, when you combine the solution and sentiment filters together, such as that it's looking for conversations where a solution was offered and the customer sentiment was negative, we are now left with a list of conversations where a solution was offered, however the customer was quite upset throughout the conversation. This can be worthwhile for your review team to explore as it can help uncover some process and even product deficits within your company. Another good filter combination that can uncover worthwhile feedback to give to your agent is one where you filter for the agent tone to be negative and for also for the customer to leave a poor CSAT rating. This can help find hyper relevant conversations for agent feedback. For example, I only have one conversation that fits that filter condition. However, it was super relevant for me to review this case 
as the agent really did not perform well. You can combine any of Klaus's filters to find those super specific cases to review. You can make use of all of our auto QA filters as well as our other AI offerings, along with our default and custom field options that we've retrieved from your help desk. There really is almost an endless possibility of filter combinations you can apply to find those super relevant cases. No longer should you rely on a random sample of tickets to review, you should be dedicating your actual human manual efforts in cases that are worthwhile reviewing. That's how you make the most out of your QA program. And the good news is, is that all of those auto QA category options are available to use in your assignment conditions, meaning that you can automate the whole process and still have actionable, worthwhile cases to review every week. Your AutoQA dashboard tracks your team's performance across all six AutoQA categories for 100% of your ticket volumes. It is the best place to track trends over time and identify training needs of your team and individual agents. The dashboard can be filtered by time period, workspace, by agent, language, rating categories, as well as other filter options that have made their way to our dashboards for the first time, such as sentiment, allowing you to see how your team's quality is with customers who have more negative sentiment compared to those that have positive sentiment. This can be helpful to identify how well your agents do with their empathy skills and tone of voice when dealing with difficult customers. Up the top, it'll let you know how many conversations have been reviewed by the AI compared to how many were reviewed manually. It's also here where you'll see the acceptance rate for your auto QA categories. This displays the percentage of cases where auto QA had graded a category and your human submitted that review without changing the auto QA score. The higher the acceptance rate, the more aligned auto QA is with your line of grading. You get a bird's eye view of your language breakdown of your support team. Again, remember this is covering 100% of your conversations. This can help you identify where to invest your support efforts. For example, if you have a growth in volume for a particular language, it may be worthwhile to have that language supported in your knowledge base. The auto scores over time section helps to quickly identify drops in performance, allowing you to fix the problem sooner. This is effective as again, it's measuring against all of your ticket volumes, as opposed to just the two to 10% you would typically review manually. Automatic first manual reviewed card highlights how much you are able to manually review compared to the reviews that have been done automatically by Klaus's AI. The auto scores by reviews table is one of the most useful ones in the dashboard. This lets you identify which agents are struggling against the, each of the six categories the most. You are able to sort each column to easily get that list of agents who are underperforming in that area. This lets you see who needs training the most and also gives you a place to look in your main conversation tab for relevant conversations to review for each of your agents. The root causes of spelling and grammar table is useful to find those repeat offenders within your team. And with the highlight functionality of each mistake, you can coach your agents on where they are going wrong. The last tip I wanted to talk about was the solution category itself. Klaus's auto QA is able to detect if a solution was provided by your agent to the customer. However, Klaus will not be able to determine if the solution provided was the correct one or not. With that in mind, there's a couple of approaches you can take to making the most out of the solution category. First of all, as mentioned previously, you are actually able to change the score that the auto QA has provided. So for example, if you found a category where the solution was provided, but it wasn't actually the correct one, your review team will be able to change that score and leave detailed feedback as to why that solution was incorrect. Alternatively, you can create a second category to determine if the solution provided was correct or not. That way, you can leave it up to AutoQA to determine if a solution was provided or not, and then your manual reviewer can come in and decide if it was actually the correct solution or not. By including the AutoQA solution category, you gain the benefit of being able to filter for cases where agents were not able to offer any solution at all. This can indicate a lack of product knowledge or troubleshooting techniques, or it can uncover valuable insights into your product or process limitations. It's useful to remember that AutoQA is not here to replace your review team. 
but instead it's here to help them be more efficient and effective with their time. AutoQA is useful on three main fronts. First, it acts as the first line of quality control, allowing you to dive deeper into the conversations that need human attention via the ability to filter for conversations based on the AutoQA results. Second, it helps your reviewers complete their reviews faster and with less bias. And third, it gives you a complete overview on your support quality across 100% of your conversations. This allows you to identify the training needs of your team and act faster before these problems become too big. We are constantly updating and improving the AutoQA offering, so stay tuned for more exciting advancements of the AutoQA feature. Thanks for watching.